A linear function can be used to calculate output values for a given set of input values. For example, if I were to consider the function f of x um, equals 2x plus 3, I could select values from my domain shown along the x-axis, and I could compute corresponding values that go uh, with, with my range shown here on the y-axis. Um, so if I was to make a quick table of values, here's x's and here's the computed f of x's. Uh, for example, when x equals 0, 2 times 0 is 0 plus 3 is 3. So 0 produces an output value of 3. And I could plot that point. Uh, when x is 1, 2 times 1 is 2 plus 3 is 5. So 1 produces an output of 5. When x is 2, I have an output value of 4 plus 3, or 7. 2 gives me 7. Uh, when x is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3 is 9. 3 gives me an output of 9. And I, I could also include on this, uh, and still be in this piece of, in this graph window, uh, if x was 4, 2 times 4 is 8. 9, 10, 11, plus 3 is 11. So when I'm at 4, I'm going to hit 11. Because these points were generated by a function, it's not, in fact, in a linear function, it's not a surprise that they're all lying exactly on the stri same straight line. Um, I could take a, a ruler or a straight edge and I could draw the line that goes through these points. Um, and it's not a surprise because, again, the function 2x plus 3 we know is a linear function. Often in the pursuit of scientific truth, we conduct experiments and collect data. And although this data rarely forms a perfect line, the relationship between the data points, the data values collected, um, often approximates a line. Uh, consider the experiment of asking about 40, 50 students in a class to allow us to measure their wingspan, which is the distance between their fingertip to fingertip when their arms are outstretched. And that would be one data point for a particular person. And then plot that against their height. In, in both cases, these measurements were made in centimeters. And we can see that um, although the data is not on a perfect line, when we look at this, it's clear that there is, there is a linear function, there is a linear relationship here. Um, there is a relationship, and it seems that the longer one's wingspan is, the taller the person is. Um, and there are, of course, exceptions and variations, and we can see, um, you know, some people that deviate more from this trend line. Um, but in general, we can see that as one of those numbers goes up, the other goes up with it. In this video, I describe how to use the TI-83 or 84 calculator to find the line of best fit. This line represents a mathematical model for our data. Um, it allows us to predict output values given input values. And using simple algebra, we can find the value of an input that produces a desired output value. Somewhere amongst this data, is there, a line, there is a line that fits it. Um, well, there's a line of best fit. It doesn't fit it perfectly. There's always going to be some error. In fact, if you look at this, you can see this line, which we will, again, say constitutes a mathematical model for this data, um, rarely predicts or predicts the exact uh, output value. Some of the closest values we have are, you know, right here when x is equal to 1. We can see that my model predicts that it will be slightly above the number 2. Now this particular data point uh, had a value that looked like it was two. Um, here when uh, x is six, the model predicts that we're gonna be somewhere around the number five, and we can see that there's an error between the, the predicted value, five, and the actual value. So as I look at these, you can see that every single one of these, there's a predicted value, that would be the one that's on my line, and there's the error, a predicted value and the error. 
And the goal of uh, finding the line of best fit, the mathematics in the background, basically seeks to minimize this error, to reduce the error as much as possible and create the model, the linear model, that fits the best, the data uh, in the best way possible. Here's a set of sample data that I've plotted in GeoGebra. I'm going to use this data to demonstrate how we use our calculator to find the line of best fit. You can see the values. There's six points in all, points A through F. And for each point, we have both the X and the Y values. Let's start our TI calculator. I'm using the TI-83 here. And it just kind of fits on the screen. I'm going to turn the calculator on. And let me clear this as I was playing with some data earlier. So let's take a look at this. The, the first thing that we need to be able to do with our calculator is enter the data. So to enter the data in our calculator, we're going to be using the stats button. It's right here uh, near the set of arrow keys, STAT. I'm going to press that. And you can see I have options to edit my data, to perform calculations with data, and to run statistical tests with the data. Right now we're going to begin by editing the data. So I'm going to press enter, lower left, lower right button. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and enter my X values. So in, in list one, you can see that we're organized here in different lists. List one, we're going to place our X values. And in list two, we're going to enter our corresponding Y values. So in list one, uh, we're going to enter the value one for X. We're going to enter two, six, 5, 12, and the last value is 8. Um, 1, 2, 6, 5, 12, and 8. I'm going to go over and I'm going to enter the corresponding Y values. It's very important that I get these together because the calculator will be treating these as XY pairs. So it's, it's, uh, we're inferring that this value X goes with this value Y. So my ordered pairs, uh, my y values for these ordered pairs are 1, I've got a 3, a 5, a 3, an 8, and we end with another 5. Before I leave, I want to just double check that I have an equal number of values in each column. My x's and my y's should be the same, and they are. I'm not going to go ahead and leave the statistics editor by pressing second and quit. What I'm going to do now is prepare my calculator to display this data. To do that, I need to make some changes to the statistics plot. So I'm going to press second and then go to stat plot. Once here, I can see that I have one, two, three, at least four different statistics plots. We're just going to modify the first one. So I'm going to press enter and I'm going to go to on. Once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just verify that it is set at a uh, scatter plot, that I'm reading my x values from list 1, my y values are coming from list 2, and that's the symbol that it's going to use to plot each of the points. Now that the stats plot is turned on, I like to go ahead and zoom my window so that it'll display this data in an appropriate window. So I'm going to press um, zoom. And I believe option number nine is zoom statistics. So this will, the calculator will look at all the data points that we've given it, and it's going to create a window that will best fit all that, those points. So I'll go ahead and hit uh, enter. And you can see it plots the points, and we can see pretty much the exact same relationship between the points uh, on the screen uh, here and, the, and the, on the calculator screen. What we're going to do now is uh, two things. We're going to set up our calculator so that it'll run diagnostics and give us uh, something called R, our correlation coefficient. And we're also going to ask it to create the line of best fit for the data. Now, if this calculator is yours and other people or other students aren't using it, you don't need to check this. But if it's one that you're borrowing and you're not familiar with, it's a good idea to, to make sure that, court, that uh, diagnostics is turned on. So I'm going to quit the graph view, and then I'm going to press second and go down to catalog. 
catalog is right above the, the button number zero. So when I press that, it gives a very lengthy list of a bunch of commands that this calculator has. And I can go down and I can just press the arrow key, go down, 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 until I get to the letter D. A little shortcut I can do is I can press alpha. And once alpha is pressed, I can hit the letter D, which is on this key. And when I go to it, it'll jump to the Ds, so I don't have to scroll down quite as far. At any rate, either keep going until you come upon the following two commands, diagnostic off. We want diagnostics on. So all we're going to do is we're going to just grab that command by pressing enter, and then we're going to execute that command by pressing enter again. So diagnostics on is done. It's set up and prepared to give us some additional information when we do when we find our line of best fit. So it's time to do that. So let's go ahead and press statistics. Uh, we've already edited our data. Now we're going to calculate the line of best fit. So I'm going to go over. And there's lots of options here, but option number four says linear regression AX plus B. That is a line, and it will be the line of best fit. So when I come down to here, and I press enter, um, I'll press enter one more time, and I'm given all kinds of information. Um, the first two values, A and B, are the things that I need in order to describe this line. And based on this, you can see why the line equals A times X plus B. The line at best fit here looks like it's uh, Y equals 0.57 times X. So I'm rounding to the nearest hundredth plus 0.94 for the B. So y equals 0.56x plus 0.94b. The other thing that I'm noting when I'm here is something called the correlation coefficient. That's this value r. And we're going to talk about that more in a little bit, but right now I just want us to notice that value. It's about 0.957 if I'm rounding to three decimal places. In fact, I want to write those down before we move on. So the line of best fit, uh, I'm going to write using function notation, f of x equals um, 0.5, I'm going to round it to 0 0.57, 0 0.57, and then times x, and then plus 0.94. Um, and then let's also write down r. r equals 0.96. Let's go ahead and graph this function now and add it to our, our data plot. Again, if I press graph right now, it's going to just jump back and show me the points. What we're going to do is we're going to add this line of best fit to the data and just kind of verify that it looks like it's in the right place. Um, so I'm going to press y equals and enter this as y1. So I'm, I'm typing 0.57, and I'm going to grab my variable x plus 0.94. And I'm going to go ahead and press enter there. And once that function's in, let's hit graph. And you can see we've just added the line of best fit to the data. I'm also going to add this line to GeoGebra so that we can talk a couple, about, a couple other things. So I have the line of best fit here as well. In another video, I'll talk about how you use GeoGebra to do the exact same things. I think it's um, obviously it's a lot more intuitive and more modern than our TI calculators. Um, once we have our, our equation here, you know, with the line of best fit, we can use this to make predictions about things that we can't necessarily see or that weren't in our original data set. So for example, now that we have this relationship, um, we can say, well, what what would happen if, um, if x was 19? If x was 19, what would be the appropriate output value? Now, I can look at this graph and follow it up to the curve, and I can see that it's just below this line. That line is 12, so it looks like it's around, you know, 11.9, perhaps. Um, 
how we would answer that question without just following the curve is we would consider the function. So again, if we're interested in the number 19, I can evaluate this function by feeding the number 19 in for x. So f of 19 equals 0.57 times the value of 19 that I'm passing to the function plus 0.94. If I evaluate this with the calculator, I get uh, 0.5, oops, 0.57 times 19 plus 0.94, enter. I get 11.77. So when, when x equals 19, the function is 11.77 which is reassuring because when I followed 19 up to the curve, um, I could see that it was below 12. Over here is the number 12, follow it over. And we now know that this value is, is about 11.77. Um, I could do that for several other values, but I wanted to just talk about going the other way. What if the question was, what value of x would produce an output of exactly 7? So here's an output of 7. And I can see that the input that produces that is somewhere between the numbers 10 and 9. My question is, what value is that? So I'm going to use, again, my function notation to, to answer that question. Um, again, my function is still uh, right at the top here. It's f of x equals 0.57x plus 0.94. I want to know when the function produces the value of 7. So I'm going to write 7 for the f of x, and I'm going to say that that equals 0.57x plus 0.94. And what I'm going to do is solve this for x, and that will answer the question, which value of x produces a 7? This is a fairly straightforward equation to solve. I'm going to begin by subtracting 0.94 from both sides. Um, 0.94. When I do that, I get uh, 6, 6 0.06 equals 0.57x. And then I'm going to finish by dividing both sides of this by, um, oops, Oh my. Whoops. Point five seven. So over here, when I divide both sides, this side by point five seven, I'm left with just x. And then the other side, if I take uh, six. 0 0.06 and divide by 0 0.57. I'm told that that's about 10.63. 10.63. Again, one of the reasons why I really appreciate having the graph here is I can see, yeah, I, I knew that it was going to be somewhere between the number 10 and 11, and now I know that it's uh, actually 10.63. So it's very reasonable. So to summarize, what we've done is we have a set of data that uh, is comprised by very data. It has both x values and y values. And looking at this data, we went ahead and created a plot of it. Um, once we have this plot, we grabbed our TI calculator. Um, and in the uh, statistics window, uh, we opened up our editor. And we entered the x values in list 1 and the y values in list 2. Uh, we also verified that the statistic plot was turned on. And once we did that, we went ahead and hit zoom. And choice number nine is zoom stat. Um, later, we went back in and did our regression and came up with the line of best fit. It's still in here, and it's showing that. Uh, to calculate the line of best fit, again, remember, we hit statistics, went to calculate, and down to option number four. Once we are looking at this, 
So we can see that the line of best fit is y equals 0.57x plus 0.94. And our correlation coefficient, which I have not talked about in this video, is 0.9. Uh, 0.96 if I'm rounding. I think we're going to stop it there. That's enough for this video.